Welcome back. Starting this video, let's learn about LibUV's thread pool and the role it plays in the async non-blocking nature of Node.js. I'm going to start with something we are familiar with, reading from a file using the FS module. I'm going to copy paste code that reads contents from a file named file.txt. We have the FS module import, a log statement first, fs.read file which logs file contents and then a log message last. When I run node index, we see first and then last and finally file contents. From this, it is clear that the read file method is asynchronous and non-blocking. It is allowing the execution of code further down the line while the file contents are being read. But how is Node able to do this? The answer is LibUV's thread pool. Here is how you can imagine the conversation between JavaScript's main thread and LibUV when the main thread encounters an asynchronous method. Hey LibUV, I need to read file contents, but that is a time consuming task. I don't want to block further code from being executed during this time. Can I offload this task to you? In response, LibUV says, sure main thread, unlike you who is single threaded, I have a pool of threads that I can use to run some of these time consuming tasks. When the task is done, the file contents are retrieved and the associated callback functions can be run. Really simple. So LibUV's thread pool, as the name indicates, is literally a pool of threads that Node.js uses to offload time consuming tasks and ensure the main thread is not blocked for a long time. If this makes sense, let's now head back to VS Code and understand about the thread pool in a bit more detail. Now what we are going to do is basically execute a method and measure the time it takes to run that method. We will do this across different scenarios, which will help shed more light on what exactly happens behind the scenes. For our experiments, we're going to use a brand new module, which is the crypto module. Let's import it at the top. The crypto module provides cryptographic functionality and similar to the FS module, it does use LibUV's thread pool for some of its methods. We are going to use one specific method from the crypto module, namely pbkdf2. So crypto dot pbkdf2. This stands for password based key derivation function two and is one of the popular methods to hash passwords before storing them. And we don't have to worry about what the method does or the arguments that we need to pass in. You just have to remember this is a CPU intensive method that takes a long time and is offloaded to LibUV's thread pool. All right, for our first experiment, we're going to measure the time taken to run the synchronous version of pbkdf2. There are a lot of experiments to run, so let me copy paste the code to save us some time. So we have pbkdf2 sync method, which is called with five different arguments. Like I mentioned already, you don't have to worry about these. We are also measuring the time taken using the date object. Of course, there are better ways to measure performance, but this will suffice for our little experiment. When I save the file and run node index, you can see the password is hashed in 261 milliseconds. This number can change for you depending on your hardware. Now, if I duplicate this same function, save the file and run the code, we see almost twice the amount of time. Duplicate once more, run node index, and we see the time taken is nearly three times. From this, we can say that each call to pbkdf2 sync, as indicated by the very name, 
is synchronous and blocking. As a graph, we can visualize this as sequential execution. If t is the time taken to execute one function call, 3t is the total time taken to execute three function calls. In fact, you should know that every method in Node.js that has the sync suffix always runs on the main thread and is blocking. This will be our inference from experiment one. Let's now proceed to experiment two. This time we are going to invoke the asynchronous version of pbkdf2. Once again, I'm going to copy paste the code to save us some time. The code may seem a little confusing, but this is the simplest code I can set up to run our second experiment. What we have here is a call to pbkdf2 async version. It contains the same five arguments, but also contains a callback function that is executed when the hashing is complete. It is within this callback function that we log the time taken to run the method. The method call is wrapped in a for loop, which at the moment runs just once. It is controlled using the max calls constant here. If we save the file and run node index, we see 261 milliseconds, about the same as the synchronous version. Now though, let me change maximum calls to two. So we will run pbkdf2 twice. When I rerun node index, you can see both calls take approximately 260 milliseconds, a little higher than a single call, but it is definitely not twice as long. Let's change maximum calls to three. Rerun. And you can see the time taken is still around 270 milliseconds. The third function call is not taking three times as much as the first one. As a graph, we can visualize this as parallel execution. This means each call to pbkdf2 runs in a separate thread. And where are these separate threads? in LibUV's thread pool. A few methods like fs.readfile and crypto.pbkdf2 run on a separate thread in LibUV's thread pool. They do run synchronously in their own thread, but as far as the main thread is concerned, it appears as if the method is running asynchronously. This will be our inference from experiment two. Hopefully, you now understand how async methods are executed under the hood. Now we are not quite done with our experiments. There's still a lot more to uncover about the thread pool. If you are intrigued, join me in the next video where we will understand what happens when we further increase the max calls constant. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.